How's it going everybody, Cub Fan here, and today I'm going to take a look at the first 1.7 snapshot. This is snapshot 13W36A, and there are a absolute ton of changes this week, including the new terrain changes, changes to fishing, and a bunch of other really cool new features, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, first of all, in the options menu, there are some new options. First thing you see is the super secret settings. Right now, if you click on it, nothing happens, but you can imagine something pretty cool is coming there. There are also new sound options, so you can individually toggle different sounds in the world to have a different volume level, uh, or use the master volume control here, but you can now individually toggle uh, sound options. Also, resource packs, uh, they have a new interface here to help you move in between different resource packs. I only have default right now. Uh, but you can move these back and forth. You can even mix resource packs and have, say, the texture pack of one and the sound pack of another one. And then if we go ahead and go into single player, we'll make a new world. Let's make it a creative world. And we'll call it 13W36A. And if we go into more world options, there is now a new world type and that is called Amplified. So Amplified worlds create terrain above the 128 level sky limit for traditional worlds. So we'll just go in here and show you that. And here is an example of an Amplified world. You can see the cloud level here represents the traditional world height. And so yeah this goes up pretty far beyond that and can generate some pretty epic structures like this. Although I will say, if you do not have a good computer, I would not run this. Um, it does load in a little bit slower in other worlds because there's more terrain to generate. And a lot more lighting effects. So let's see where we're at here. We're at Y equals 251. So this goes almost all the way up to the top of the world height. So pretty interesting terrain feature there. Alright everybody, so now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new biomes. So first of all we have the deep ocean biome. As its name implies, it's an ocean that is quite deep. Uh, but the ocean floor has changed. So if we come down to the bottom here, you'll see that the bottom of the deep ocean is now completely gravel here. Um, so there's a gravel bottom to the ocean now and then eventually it transitions into the traditional dirt, sand, and clay a little bit higher up as you get closer to land. Alright everyone, and there's also a few new beach biomes, uh, one of which is this stone beach biome. And as you can tell from the name, it's just a beach that is made out of stone. So pretty interesting there, and you can also see uh, the examples of cliffs that Jeb was talking about earlier. So that's a pretty steep drop off uh, from the top there all the way down to the ocean. Another small biome that's been added is the cold beach biome, and as its name implies, it is a cold frozen beach that has ice nearby and snow on it. Okay, one of the totally new biomes this week is the savanna biome, and it has trees that are made of jungle wood, and the trees themselves are actually slightly slanted in places, you'll see they're sort of offset a little bit, sort of resembling trees in the actual savanna. So that's a view of the savanna biome. And yet another biome variant, this is the Savannah Plateau biome. And as you can see it just sort of transitions from a regular savanna down here up into the, the sub-biome up there. Also you'll notice that the biomes are now separated by their temperature. So for instance, deserts and savannas will be located close to each other. Whereas you'll rarely find a desert next to say a snow biome anymore. So the biomes are now grouped together which is very nice. Another totally new biome this week is the Roofed Forest biome. As you can see, the Roofed Forest biome has mushrooms, uh, giant mushrooms growing naturally in it, uh, both the red and the brown types. And the trees are sort of short and stumpy. They're they're two by two trees in some areas. And of course, since it's a uh, roofed forest, there's going to be a pretty significant canopy here. So that does mean that more mobs will spawn in this biome. Another brand new biome this week is the Ice Plain Spikes biome, seen here. And in this biome there's a bunch of ice spikes everywhere, some of which can get pretty pretty tall. 
And then if we come on down here and we'll switch to survival game mode, and we get out our silk touch pick, you'll see we can get some packed ice. And this packed ice is an opaque block, so uh, it acts like normal ice, but it does not let light through. Also new in this snapshot, Mojang has added some small sub-biomes to traditional biomes. So, as you can see here, we are in the desert, and we'll just check that by checking the biome over there, regular desert. But if we go over here, we see that our biome has changed to Desert M, which means Desert Mountain Biome. And as you can see here, the, uh, the terrain has become much more hilly and much more varied. And then once we come out the other side, uh, changes back from Desert M to just traditional desert once again. And here you can see a variation of the forest biome, which is called a birch forest biome. Another new biome variation is the cold taiga biome. And this is just a taiga biome that has snow on the ground here. Also, although we've had some taiga biomes for quite some time, they're traditionally snowy. But now that we have a separate cold taiga biome, the regular taiga biome no longer has snow in it. Okay, everybody, another new biome variation is the mega taiga biome, which is seen here. And this biome has some 2x2 two two giant spruce wood trees, as well as some mossy cobblestone boulders all around. And it also has this new type of, uh, type of ground here. It looks kind of like dirt. But if we go ahead and change our game mode to survival, and use a silk touch shovel on it, you'll see that it's actually called Podzol. And this is what the Mesa biome currently looks like, so obviously there needs to be a bug that is fixed here. Uh, but it seems like there's going to be some pretty steep sides to these mesas. And a fairly interesting biome here, this is the Sunflower Plains biome. Uh, and it just has a whole bunch of sunflowers everywhere. Pretty interesting. And here's another example of an even bigger Sunflower Plains biome. Uh, so these biomes aren't necessarily small. They can be pretty big as evidenced here. Also new in this snapshot, the terrain generation for swamps has changed. There is now less area of open water and more areas like this with lily pads and just splotches of dirt uh, everywhere. Sort of like a marsh type of feel now. And another new biome this week is the Extreme Hills Plus biome seen here. So this has a little bit of a different terrain generator than just the plain old Extreme Hills. And you'll also notice that there's some snow up here, uh, but it's only above a certain level. Um, so now in the game, if it's a non-warm biome, snow will generate on the tops of mountains which are above level 90. Another new biome this week is the Flower Forest biome. And as you can see, it is a sea of flowers, uh, as far as the eye can see here, basically. Wow, that is a lot of flowers. Pretty interesting biome here. Okay, everybody, so now that we've seen some of the biomes, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new blocks, items, and features in this week's snapshot. So, first things first, uh, the new blocks. So, we have packed ice now, which I showed you is naturally spawned in the Ice Plain Spikes biome. And one unique feature of packed ice is that it does not melt when placed next to a torch. And then I also showed you the other new block, which is which is Podzol. And the unique thing about Podzol, you can place uh, mushrooms down in broad daylight. You see you can't do that on traditional grass or dirt. And then you can also grow the giant mushrooms right on there. So it's sort of like uh, mycelium. And another great feature of packed ice is that when you break it, it does not turn into water like normal ice does. Okay, switching gears now, we'll go ahead and take a look at a lot of the flowers that were added this week. So if we come over here, the first one we'll see uh, is the traditional dandelion, which hasn't changed. And of course it yields dandelion yellow dye. The next flower is a new flower, it's the poppy flower. It replaces the rose as uh, the traditional red standalone flower. And it has a little bit of a darker spot in the center. And it will yield red dye. Then we have the blue orchid, which is a blue flower with some branches coming off. It yields light blue dye. Then we have the allium flower, which has sort of like a sphere globe type thing on top of it. And it's a purple flower. 
and it yields magenta dye. Next up, the Azure Bluette. Uh, it has a yellow and white uh, coloring to it, and it will yield light gray dye. Then we have four different types of tulips. We have the red tulip, orange tulip, white tulip, and pink tulip. And the red tulip yields red, orange yields orange, the white actually yields light gray, and the pink will yield uh, pink dye. Then we have the ox eye daisy, which has a yellow center surrounded by white, and it also yields light gray dye. Next up we have the sunflower, and you'll notice that the sunflower itself is pointing to the east. And sunflowers will always point to the east, so that's how you can tell a direction in Minecraft. Uh, you, other than hitting F3, of course. But if you craft up uh, the sunflower's drop, which is its its face here, you get the uh, dandelion yellow drop back. Then we have a lilac flower, which will yield magenta dye. Got some double tall grass now, which yields two, uh, two grass if you use shears on it. Large fern, I uh, get two ferns back. A rose bush yields red dye, and then a peony uh, yields pink dye. So those are all of the flowers that are currently in the game. Also in this snapshot, fishing has been greatly improved. So let me go ahead and cast in, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we cast in, immediately you'll see some jumping water particle effects coming out of the surface of the water. And that's supposed to simulate fish jumping. And there's some fish right there heading toward my bobber. You saw it. And we caught some raw salmon, which is a new type of fish. Uh, those water particle effects you saw earlier were fish swimming toward my bobber. So you can now see fish in the water as they uh, come close to your bobber. Alright everyone, so the four types of fish in Minecraft now are the generic fish, salmon, puffer fish, and clownfish. And so you can cook up both the generic fish and the raw salmon in a furnace. And the raw salmon and the fish uh, will become cooked fish. And I'll show you the texture here for the cooked salmon. There we go. There's the cooked salmon texture. And then you can eat this. And it gives you some hunger bars back. And you can eat the clownfish, but it only takes up, or adds rather, half a bar of hunger. You can also eat the puffer fish, but you'll see it gives you nausea 2, poison 4, and hunger 3, so not really the best choice of food there. And if you use the puffer fish in a brewing stand with an awkward potion and brew it up, you can make a potion of water breathing, and then you can add effects to it like any other potion. And then as the name implies, Water breathing potion gives you the ability to breathe underwater indefinitely until the potion runs out. And you can also now enchant fishing rods, so the luck of the sea enchantment will help you get better loot when you're fishing. And the lure rod, I believe, will help you to catch fish and other items easier. So with fishing you can now get a bunch of different items, um, some of which include good things like enchanted books and name tags. But you can also get bad things like broken leather armor and lily pads. There are also new particle effects that show up when you fall and hit the ground. So for instance, let me show you here. We'll fall and then some particles will show up. And if we go up even higher and fall from a higher distance, there are more particles. Also new this week, if you have a written book here, you can place it in a crafting table and place book and quills in alongside of it and craft up copies of that book. Also new this week, there have been big changes to gold and iron pressure plates. For instance, now they no longer count how many items are on the pressure plate. They will only output a signal strength of one for any item thrown on them. However, they will now output a redstone signal when a player stands on them, and they can also count how many mobs are on them. So for instance, put a zombie there, two zombies, three, four, five. See the signal strength gets bigger as we put more and more mobs on the pressure plate. Also new this week, instead of double tapping W to sprint, you can now hit control instead. So that's another option you can use to sprint. And speaking of options, if we go into the options menu, 
there is a whole new controls panel and this will help you reset your keyboard if you don't want to use the traditional controls you can easily go in and change your settings from the default to whatever key you would like to have that action correspond to. Another small change is the change to the sugarcane texture. The color of the sugarcane will now vary depending on what biome it's in and it looks a little bit greener to me as well. Okay everyone and one of the best commands this week that was added is the slash summon command. So if I just come down here and check the coordinates of this point we can spawn anything that we want at that point or at any other point in the world. So let's just go ahead and do this. We'll do slash summon and if we hit tab here you can see all the things we can spawn. We can spawn mobs of any type, uh, a lot of different entities like throne potions, uh, XP orbs, and prime TNT. So we'll go ahead and slash summon a prime TNT at that location. Whoop, three seven, there we go. And six six. One, two, two, six. Nice. And you can also use it to get stuff at your location just by typing uh, slash summon. And we'll do the ender crystal here. Nice. And there's also some cool changes to command blocks. So first of all, you can see the previous output from the command block uh, before you look at it. And if there's any error messages, they will show up there in your command. Um, but the thing I want to show you is that you can now give items with custom data via commands. So here this will give the nearest player a diamond sword with no damage. And it will display the name Excalibur above it. And then you can add lore. Uh, I added the lore that it was crafted by Merlin himself. And then if you wanted to, you could also add an enchantment down in this area here. Um, and then once we power it, you'll see we get that sword and Excalibur crafted by Merlin himself. So pretty cool stuff there. Also, melons now naturally generate in the jungle biomes. Uh, so that is actually a fairly significant change because uh, that means in things such as UHC, you can now make health potions without actually having to find melon seeds and grow them. So that's all the changes I could find in this week's snapshot. A lot of really great features coming out in 1.7 that I'm super excited for. And hopefully we'll see a lot more coming up in the upcoming snapshots as well. So thank you all for watching. This has been CubFan. Goodbye.